What is going on today guys, AU here, and today we're bringing you the official first team builder of UGL Season 1. Now, like I've said in my last video, there's been two videos up regarding UGL. One was the draft breakdown, one was a exhibition match against KJ, which was just basically a fun match for us to test out our Elgato settings and stuff, and luckily we are good to go. So, um, this season is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be doing the team builders and the battles separately because with in-game battles, they tend to get a little bit on the lengthy side. And I don't want my videos running 40 minutes or 50 minutes, potentially an hour every single time. It's just not great for my computer to hold. It's not great for me to edit uh, and try to render at the same time. So we're gonna be breaking these up. Um, so the team builder should be around 12-ish minutes long and every battle should be around 20 to 30 minutes. And the longer ones would go somewhere from 40, maybe to an hour, um, but they should only be around 30, 30-ish minutes. But if you are new here, subscribe and like the video because that's what's going to help me out the most and you can see i don't have my layout just because um the layout is not going to be on every game anymore because i i still haven't figured out how to put layouts in the elgato software so once i figure that out the layouts may come back but i'm kind of just kind of just going through it and uh we're just going to talk about things uh here in the team builder and during the video um it would just be full screen no face cam no anything kind of just trying to focus on the gameplay a little bit more um and get get my head in the game again because it's been a while since i've done since i've recorded a draft league i've done a lot of draft leagues in between when i stopped recording and now i'm starting again but um my team honestly not really my favorite play style but i think the team is still good so i think we can still do some work with it you can see my opponent's team up here above me um and then the the six that i'm bringing uh on the screen here you can see they're, they're basically a side spam team with mandibuzz and glarian wheezing and uh, hit on Lee with Unburdened paired with Psychic Terrain. Um, not gonna lie, I already don't like my matchup a lot. Um, the thing is though, I think they have to bring, they have to bring Mandibuzz, they have to bring Weezing, they have to bring a DD, and uh, there was one more that they have to bring uh, hit on Lee, I think is another one they have to bring. Pretty sure they bring hit, uh, Cinderace, and honestly, Lantern walls a lot of my team, but I don't think they really like Lantern that much from what I was hearing them talk about last night. And we were all in voice chat and they were kind of talking about uh, they already dropped Lantern for another Pokemon. So I doubt they're bringing Lantern to this match. So we'll probably see Jirachi. Um, hopefully we don't see Galvantula. Uh, if we don't see Galvantula, I, I will be happy because then the webs won't be on my side for the Salazzle because Salazzle actually kind of does a lot of work against this team. Um, and I won't have to worry about uh, wasting any turns on rapid spin or anything. But right here, we're starting out with a Wish Protect Togekiss. Um, I actually drafted Togekiss to kind of be more of an offensive thing, but I, I couldn't bring Vaporeon to this match. So Togekiss is taking the role of the Wish Protect and uh, hopefully can get some wishes off against Girder. It can sit in on Mandibuzz. It can sit in on Indeedee if Indeedee does not have uh, Expanding Force. Even if it does have Expanding Force, we can sit there for a little bit, um, as long as it's not Specs. Specs ex Expanding Force does a lot, but I think they have to bring Scarf and Didi. We also can sit in on the Hitmonlee. Um, I think I'd take less than half from a Poison Jab. I'll have to check that again before the game. We sit in on Special Jirachi, um, not so much Physical Jirachi, and Cinderace, if it doesn't have Iron Head or Gunk Shot, then we can kind of sit in on that too. Uh, we also come in on Eldegoss. We come in on... Um, Dusknor, uh, just because Ice Punch isn't going to do that much to us. Uh, we have Wish Protect, Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash. A lot of my EV spreads are going to look a little weird because we're EVing at level 50, so I have to make sure I'm not wasting EVs. Um, but yeah, so Togekiss is just basically here as the Mandibuzz answer. I don't have a ton of Mandibuzz wheezing answers, so uh, Togekiss is there to take care of that Mandibuzz and to switch into Mandibuzz. And if he gets a Toxic off on us, then that might be a little bit, a uh, little little bad but hopefully he doesn't carry toxic next we have our obstacle we're actually running heavy duty boots this week just because of the sticky webs and i have reckless and double edge um reckless actually boosts the power of double edge which is kind of big also knockoff is really good against this team um wheezing max defense wheezing i think takes 40 percent to double edge so it can't switch in a lot um it can come in i can click double edge and then i can click parting shot and go into uh salazzle salazzle actually can set up on wheezing so that's kind of what i'm hoping for uh, a lot of things don't really take double edge that well. He's not going to want to switch Jirachi in a lot because uh, once I get a knockoff on Jirachi, it's taking a ton of damage and it's losing his item. So that's kind of huge. And uh, same thing with like Cinderace. Um, Cinderace doesn't want to switch in on a knockoff or even a double edge. 
Hitmonlee doesn't want to switch in. Like Cinderace and Hitmonlee are the two things that would come in as a uh, as a revenge killer. Um, and then Mandibuzz could come in, but it probably doesn't want its item knocked off. He doesn't have to run boots because my team has no no stealth rockers. If he's if he has boots, he's basically basically just wasting an item. So I don't think he's going to have boots. Um, but if we do knock knock off leftovers or or any kind of resist barrier or something, that would be great. Um, but mana buzz i think still takes a good bit from double edge so so that'll be good next we have our choice scarf flygon which is one of our win cons um we just have to make sure that wheezing and mana buzz go down once we get wheezing and mana buzz down flygon beats the rest of his team with scarf earthquake um but wheezing and mana buzz give this thing a hard time because wheezing gets levitate mana buzz is obviously immune um the thing is if he's not if he's not levitate wheezing all we have to do is get rid of mana buzz because uh, I feel like the chance of him bringing Misty Terrain Weezing is kind of good with the fact that I have I could have Toxic on Salazzle, uh, which is a pretty common set, and I have I could have Flame Orb, uh, Flame Orb, what's it called, Obstagoon, and I have Guts uh, Girder. I also have Quick Feet Jolteon, so I feel like Misty Terrain is not a horrible bring. Do I think he's going to bring it? No, but there's a, a, a higher possibility that he brings Misty Terrain than. Um, and not bringing levitate then bringing neutralizing gas not bringing levitate i don't think there's any reason to bring neutralizing gas unless he's going to use it against one of my guts pokemon but i think misty terrain just is better overall um but like i said once if he's not levitate wheezing once we get rid of mandibuzz earthquake just kind of wins because you can see yeah it hits jirachi which we speed tie with it hits cinderace which i doubt he's going to be scarf on um it hits the Galvantula for a good bit of damage. It hits Hitmonlee for a good bit of damage. Ride on Lantern, um, even Dustnor for a good bit of damage. And DD doesn't want to take one. So like a lot of the Pokemon just kind of are going to take either a lot of damage or just straight up die from Earthquake um, from Flygon. So that's going to be that's going to be something that uh, he has to watch out for. Next we have the Serena here. We're actually running Wide Lens Rapid Spin because of Sticky Webs, and he also has Rocks on Ride on and Jirachi, and he also has spikes or toxic spikes on wheezing so there's a lot of hazards that could go around so we have rapid spin here to get rid of those we also have power up and triple axle triple axle actually has a chance to two hit ko max defense uh mandibuzz so it's not really a switch in if i catch him on switching with triple axle all i have to do is triple axle again and he's gonna be taking a good bit of damage we also have u-turn just for pivoting because i can come in on lantern i can come in on rhydon i can uh come in on the I can come in on something. What else was it? I come in on uh, Eldegoss because of Triple Axle. I can hit the Mandibuzz if it's lower than half. I can come in on Mandibuzz and hit that with a Triple Axle. So like, there's a good bit of Pokemon that I can come in on and kind of get a revenge kill or a lot of damage off on. And uh, also I could force him out and into something else. And then this is the Pokemon that actually is going to do a lot of work against this team. If I can get behind a sub and get a nasty plot up, then uh, Sludge Wave pretty much just kills his whole team outside of Jirachi uh, but at that point flamethrower kills Jirachi and like I don't think he has a switch in a uh, wheezing has the chance to be Oko with no spe no special defense investment right on special defense is bad lantern is the only thing that he could bring that would wall this set um, but like I said I don't think he's bringing lantern because he didn't really he, did, he he's already dropped lantern I don't think he likes lantern so if he doesn't bring Lantern, then I come in on Weezing, I come in on Jirachi, um, and maybe come in on Jirachi if it's choice, I come in on Jirachi Iron Head, um, I come in on Galvantula, I come in on Eldegoss, I come in on even Mandibuzz to an extent, like I don't think Mandibuzz is going to be doing that much damage to me, um, but we can get an Asti plot up and then just deal a ton of damage to his team, obviously I gotta really have to wait until Ndidi's gone, because, or at least I'm behind sub against Ndidi, because Ndidi is probably going to be Scarf for this game, just because of Salazzle. I think that's the only reason he's Scarf this game is because of Salazzle. And uh, I'm not really looking forward to facing Scarf Ndidi with Expanding Force, but I mean, we kind of have to. Uh, it's just size spam actually kind of hurts my team a lot. But the other thing is that if he's Scarf Ndidi, then uh, I get I get to bring Obstagoon in on a, a psychic move almost every single time um which is which is big because then i get knockoff or parting shot uh and i get either momentum or they lose their item so that's that's huge and then for the last pokemon we are bringing bozo our girder 
a lot of you know that in NSL I had Girder and Flygon. Girder, I loved Girder the whole time. Girder is the Pokemon that I'm using to beat Cinderace. I'm using it to beat Hitmonlee. I'm using it to beat um, Jirachi. I'm using it to beat. Using it to beat. Uh, what else was it? Mandibuzz, if it doesn't have Brave Bird. Um, but yeah, the main thing is Hitmonlee because with Hitmonlee. Um, and then on Lee, if he sets up his unburden too early, and I still have Girder around, he might pick up one kill, but then Girder just comes in and uh, it walls it. He could even have knockoff, but that's why I have bulk up. So if he comes in, if I come in on him on Lee, I just click bulk up and he could click knockoff if he wants. But even still at that point, he's doing roughly the same amount of damage that he would if I had my Eevee light. If he does a click off, knock off, then he, he's doing way less damage than what he would because I have my Eevee light and a, and a defense boost. So... He has to make sure that he's not setting up his unburden too early because, like I said, if he does, Girder comes in and forces him on the out because it wins that 1v1. Um, especially after one bulk up, it wins that 1v1. So that's kind of why I have to bring Girder this week. I know he has a lot of psychic type Pokemon that would hurt Girder, but we take less than half from a Zen Headbutt, I'm pretty sure, from Jirachi. Um, and it has to come for Cinderace and it has to come for, for, uh, for the Hitmonlee. Even the Cinderace, I think Zen Headbutt outside of Psychic Terrain does less than half. I, if it doesn't, I think it was like 60 something. These are all calcs that I'll go over again before the game starts to make sure that I'm not missing anything. But uh, this is the Hitmonlee counter. I need to make sure I'm not getting swept by Hitmonlee because Hitmonlee gets coverage for Togekiss. It gets coverage for uh, Obstagoon. It gets coverage for Flygon. Even if it doesn't get coverage for Flygon, Close Combat probably just kills it. It gets coverage for... Uh, Serena because it gets Poison Jab for Togus and Serena gets Earthquake for the Salazzle and I think the only thing it doesn't get for anything is Girder, which is why Girder has to come but hopefully we come out with a W on this first this first week the hardest thing is always the first week because you don't really know what your opponent is comfortable bringing what they're not comfortable bringing and my matchup straight out the gate isn't isn't great so I'm hoping that he messes up in prep I'm hoping I see Rhydon, I'm hoping I see Eldegoss, and I'm hoping I see, um, I'm hoping I see Lantern, because Lantern actually just loses to Flygon, so I'm hoping I see one of those three, because then that means he's either left Jirachi, Mandibuzz, Weezing, or Hitmonlee on the bench, and that would be great for me, but, um, yeah, like I said, hopefully we come out with a W, I'm a little bit nervous just because of my matchup, um, but I think it's gonna be fun either way, I'm really excited to Go ahead and get the ball rolling on this season um this should be going up saturday so the battle should be going up sunday so yeah that's pretty much it so if you like what you saw like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one see you